the great mountain which um, these are the houses on the other end of the lake you know and uh, further up we have the great Alt of Achla now right down here all the way to the bottom And then as we come along the lake, look down the lake, Mary, all the way along, we see Jim Gallagher is away yonder in the in the distance with Scrig Fintown. And I'll just focus in on Jim's Jim and Phil Gallagher's view. Looking back towards Fintown. Now that is something. Along the lake, down here with Mum in the car and Mary. Could you explain to us about Annie's home over there? Annie's home is over there, look, what's left of it. And this big field here is still Annie's field. And the stream there that is now dry. Annie once had a white cat that fished every day, swiped the fish out of the stream every day. What, in that stream fall. there? Yeah, I used to sit by the stream and when there was one passing, it used to swipe it out of the stream. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. That's John Brennan's house over there. Yeah. And these, look at these nice sheep. Oh, yeah. Right, so we are in the Glenties Museum. And uh, there's a photograph here of my grandfather. I think it was taken... Uh, Taken around what? Uh, 1933. Yeah, 1933. There he is on the top left-hand corner. The hat. And this is the Glenties uh, Station House originally. Uh, what year did you say that was taken? 1931. Mr. Danny Boyle here at the moment, which is uh, one of the founder members of the Glenties Museum. <coughs> Danny, could you tell me when all this first started and how it all became about? It all started way back in 1984 when we did a, four of us did a story again, a program for uh, community radio. It was here in Glenties for the Miguel Festival Week. After that program, we came together, and as this building here was vacated by the tenant who lived here, we decided that we would make an application to the county council for a lease on it. And uh, the brother Mannix really had the brainwave that we should start the museum. So we took the county council, and in due course, we got the, this building, which we have it all except the far end of the building, which is still occupied by the council, where they have a library. The rest of it is in our possession now. A courtroom we get, it really only. Uh, there's a court held still there once a month, and we get it for the remainder of the time. So we have exhibits now in all the rooms, with the exception of one below that we use as a storeroom. Uh, this room, as you see, is devoted entirely to the to Miguel Railways. On the landing outside we have local archaeological exhibition. Uh, on the ground floor we have the general exhibits and in the courtroom itself we have display of old schools and some of the folklore of the area. In the basement there are three cells which were built uh, with the building way back in the building was built in 1844. Um, um, in the basement as well, we have a room where the guard room was. We've had devoted to stuff concerned with crime in the area, and after that, the old IRA activity in the area. Across the hallway from it, on the opposite side, there's a room which we're going to devote to wildlife. We have a 
map of the area in con exhibition there at the moment of the only year of our distributories connection with the fishing in the area. We have a folklore uh, cottage set up to at the end of the passageway in the basement below. The members of our committee are the original members were Mannix Boyle, my own brother, uh, Sergeant Briody, uh, Mary Campbell, and myself. And after that, we took on other members. So we've come in now for about 12. Here in the, the room, Danny's yeah. explaining here to Mary, yeah. my yeah. sister, about the different yeah. things and tickets. They're all the additions on the side. And those are the others. From here, just an artist ah, covered yes. in that board. <coughs> See the whole more Ticket for a bicycle. Yeah. See. And what did you say, Mary? There's one there for a dog. Oh. Mm. Mm. Ticket for a dog for fun time. Mm. One bicycle. I see here. You the wouldn't get that on a railway toll nowadays. Not at all. Ticket, you right? do not. Mm. Mm. You get a child's ticket mm. instead. This here reduced fares from Glint to Shelligan's for fun time. Yes. Glinty's and Shelligan's five pence single and eight pence returned. Mm. <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, right. Lord Lefford, he was the first chairman of the Finn Valley Railway Company. And it was he that was a fellow called Sir Samuel Hayes. And were, both of them were instrumental in bringing railways into the county. And they were the largest landowners in the Finn Valley. He, oh, yeah. This fella here, Lord Lefford, he resided in the main glass at Ballard Buffet. Mm. So Hayes loved that. Uh, you know the castle at Trumbo? Yes. That's, that's where Hayes lived. So that was the start of the railway in 1860. 1860, you say, yeah. Danny? Yeah. Yeah. That was a broad gauge railway. It came from Stavan and the Ballabafay. So later on, when they decided to extend it to Donegal Town, yeah. they changed it to a narrow gauge railway. And then one weekend, they changed the broad gauge to a narrow gauge. Like oh, yeah. Moving one rail just and save the other. It was done at a weekend. Mm. Now, Danny, I'd like to talk to you about my grandfather. What's your earliest collection of when you first met him? Mm. Oh, well, it was, he was at Glenty Station working as a clerk with George Young, who was station master. Both of them are in that photograph there that was taken in 1933. Very good. They were there up until the rail strike mm. that took place at the end of 33, And as a result of that, they were penalised because they wouldn't cooperate. Uh, Station master and your grandfather wouldn't cooperate with the management. It was rather unique in so far as it was published by the Donegal Railway Company. The Donegal Railway Company was one of the railway companies that was uh, so came from the Finn Valley Railway Company. But uh, it was before the County Donegal Railway's joint committee and before the West Donegal Railway. But uh, it was about in the eighteen nineties. That uh, was first, first published. It would have been hand painted originally. It was done in the Derry Central Office. Uh, as you can see there, the name at the bottom was Pat Torn, Livesey, General Manager. So there were very few people, or we were not aware of people, ever would have remembered the this one. So it got on and off for a week. You can see that poster. It shows Donegal Castle. This one here, this is Donegal Castle. Uh, yeah. Donegal Castle. That is La Hesk there. Uh, that's the train there, but two partners were up in Minley. Oh dear. And uh, this is C. League up at Carrick. Glen Cullen Kill Point, is it Glen Cullen Kill? Yeah. This here, I think this is Russ Nowler. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. 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 Explain this picture to me. This is a photograph of old Glenties. Yeah. And, uh, it would probably be one of the Lawrence collection, the famous Lawrence collection. And uh, we're assuming it's about the car, I think, more or less tells the story of the dates. It's about 1910. That oh, car, yeah, there's no good yeah. hotel. Of the course. Donald's Hotel itself didn't become a hotel until 1901. Oh, it was I see. The building, the Donald's Hotel there, it, it's, it's the present Highlands Hotel. Which the present boilers are Highlands, yeah. That's right. And, uh, was originally the house was originally the house of the agent of the Marquis of Cunningham. That's mm -hmm. what it was built for. 
Oh, I see. Uh, there's not much change, in, in fact. In the, yeah, the street still looks the same. Really looks the same. And of course... But the only thing that's missing really here is, is the traffic. Yeah. Of course, today, yes, you can see the traffic has increased a lot, and this is the modern day Glenties. Modern day Glenties, so there yeah. you can see. Yeah. Very good. Uh, it's the lower end of the town. Yeah. It shows from about the post office right to the grotto. That's right. Now, this is rather where the saddles are. This is the basement of the courtroom house now, and it contains uh, three cells yeah. further down the path here. Two, two of the cells have to be broken to. The third cell is locked uh, for a purpose. Yeah. It's not very pleasant. <laughs> so, so this is now... A special reason for keeping the other one locked. Yeah. So this is now, Danny, where people were brought, that were convicted and brought up. It was used from the time the courthouse opened in 1844 up yeah. until after the treaty. 1844 left the treaty. After the treaty was signed. Oh, I see. It was used by the Free State Army. Yeah. So, how many cells altogether were there, Danny? Uh, three cells here. The guard room at the end of it. Oh, this I see. Here. This is the guard room. Just let me. This has been done by one of our own members, Gary Lonigan. Oh, it's not lovely. Uh, it's, it's very good. Yeah. So this is of the Glenties area. This is of the Glenties area. It shows the O'Neill River and all its tributaries. Yeah, and Glenties is the piece in the middle. That's right. This is Glenties. Yeah. That we are here now, at this point. Uh huh. And it shows all the fishing. It goes right back to Loch Finn, as you can see here. Oh, I see. It takes in Loch Finn up and here, does it? Shows, it shows the old railway line as well. We're meeting oh. the Glenties from that time. Yes. Oh, very good. Down here, there's some information on three very important people from the area. Dr. O'Donnell, Pat McGill, and a fellow called Charles Elliot, who was born out in a place to call Elliot's town. Was it here? Oh, let me see. Well, where did you say it? Out at Glen Conwell, here. It's between Gentis and our. Uh, uh -huh. Adjacent to the river. Oh, I see. That's where he was born. Okay. And as you can see from this here, he was born on the 6th of May, 1792, and he emigrated to America, where he became a Methodist minister. Oh, I see. And later, a doctor of divinity. Oh. 1827, 1831, he was professor of languages in Madison College, Pennsylvania. And he wrote mainly about the Wallisianism. We died at Iowa on the 6th of January 1869. Mm. Mm. Right, Danny, so out here then is the place for the, the, the other guard room, was it? The guard room is opposite here. Yeah. The this here shows letters and things about crime in the area during the oh, I last see. century. Oh, I see. This was that's been the most prominent one, I suppose, a murder of the firm. He was uh, an agent for the Marcus of Cunningham, who was collecting rents. Oh, I see. And he was killed down in the Ross area here outside the town. Oh, I see. Nobody was yeah. up for it. And this board here shows his connection to the War of Independence and the Great War and the uh, MBF training. This here was a bayonet that Tom Cannon of Cannon's Hotel used during the 1914 war, war in Gallipoli. Is that right? Yeah. Mm. Gallipoli. What was the man's name again? The Tom Cannon of the Hotel. Tom Cannon of the Hotel. Cannon's Hotel. Oh, I he see. Was in the British Army at that time. Uh huh. And down here, Danny, was, the, of course, the little fireplace. The fireplace. Well, it was supposed to be turf too so many days. Here, they had a lot more comfort than the people who were kept in the cells, because there was no heating at all in the cells. Is that right? You can imagine how cold this place must have been in the winter time. Oh, if you were yeah. Here. The, yeah. This here is a remnant from a, a Sunderland Mark III flying boat, Canadian flying boat, that crashed on the top of the Croke Mountains up there. Yeah. In the Blue Stack Mountain. What year would that be? Uh, uh, 1944. Is that 31st right? 31st of January 1944. There were seven members of the crew killed in the crash. Oh, this this is what my mother talks about—the Silver Hill crash. She knows about it, yeah. Be it. Yeah, and was it an American or a British? It, it was a Canadian flying boat. He was they were flying from a place in Wales, 
took two in his skill, and, and he must have gone off his course a bit. He came in over the silver hill or the blue stacks, and he crashed on the top of the mountain. Oh, I see. And there was one of the guys, the only fellow that was conscious, he ran down the mountain and the it happened during the night time. He ran down the mountain and followed the river down as far as Claude before he could contact anybody. And did he make contact? He did make contact there, yeah. I think oh. it might have been into the, with the barracks he, he got there. The barracks that time was a different place in Claude. Yeah. It was down near the river. So anyway, that's the Silver Hill piece, Danny. And how did you come by this artifact? Sergeant Brayody, one of our members, got it. Oh, very good. Sergeant Brio, he's written a very good history of the area as well. Oh, very good. And around here we have the postcard section, Danny. That's right. Oh, and yes. We haven't. Yes, not a complete yet, but Leon, it's very. Yeah, and here we have musical instruments. Oh, yes. 